The next Dark Lord to succeed the throne over all Korriban and the related systems of the Sith Empire following the exile of Darth Andedu was Tulak Horde. Regarding the person of whom nearly all information has been lost, including his actual facial appearance and the dates of his life. It is known Revan, several centuries following Horde's death, donned his battle mask. What subspecies of humanoid Tulak Horde was beneath that mask is not even now known. Under his rule, the Sith Empire expanded, and with his shadow hand second in command, the Dashad Kem Val and his apprentice Orta Salin, they single handedly resubjugated the planets of Yin and Shabash, as well as discovered and conquered the Drummon system. His titles included Lord of Hate, Master of the Gathering Darkness, and Lord of the Sith. Although it remains a historical anachronism as to how he was in possession of one, he was one of the earliest beings to master the lightsaber. After the death of Tulak Horde, which we can only assume was around 5,100 BBY, the Sith were once again left without a unifying leader and quickly fell into strife between the leaders of the various factions of the Empire. While Tulak Horde had assumed power following a duel against his rival, Kem Val, whom he then made his personal servant, the duel to follow Horde's demise was not so pleasantly settled. Marco Ragnos, a Sith human hybrid descendant of the original Dark Jedi to settle on Korriban now some four generations past, beheaded his rival for the title of Sith Dark Lord a fellow Sith human named Simus. Simus, whose head managed to still live on, was preserved in a crystalline container and later made part of the Sith Council, on which he served loyally for hundreds of years. Following the death of Marco Ragnos in 5000 BBY, the Sith Council consisted of Simus, Dorgal Ram, Horak Mol, Shar Dakran, Garu, Tritus Nal, Naga Sadow, and Ludo Kreesh, as well as, ostensibly, Ragnos' own young disciple, Tenebrai, whom Ragnos had appointed Lord Vitiite he, over Medrias, then renamed Nathema, whom was a member in Absentia. Krish and Sadao became rivals for the chief position in the council and posited their rivalry in a disagreement over the direction for the future of the Sith Empire. The seven other members of the Sith Council, with Tenebrae in absentia, appointed Naga Sadao as the first Darth of Zeost and he commanded the council from their headquarters in the great citadel on that planet. Sadao's philosophy of Sith Imperial Expansionism was juxtaposed to that of Ludo Kreesh, his rival, but their duel for dominance was interrupted by the apparition of their predecessor, Marco Ragnos, followed immediately by the arrival of Lost Hyperlane Star Charters Gav and Jory Daragon from the Republic. Seeing the misfortune of the Daragons and stumbling into Sith space as an opportunity to expand the Sith Empire, Naga Sadow liberated the Daragons, returned their ship and sent Jory back to Republic space. Through duplicitous conniving, Sadow had finally killed fellow council member Simus and encouraged the other Sith councillors, including rival Ludo Kreish, to believe it was the work of the Republic. Kresh quickly discovered the truth of this matter and leaving the Sith council split with fellow councillors Horak Maul and Galram behind him. Ludo Kreish then led an attack on Sadao's fortress on the planet Kar Delba, 
which it turned out was a trap set by Sadao for Kresh. Sadao allowed Jory Darragon to escape in their starship Starbreaker 12 into hyperspace and surprised Kresh with a fleet of warships hidden behind Kardelba's moon, Kar Shion, and by turning his own Masasi soldiers and crew to mutiny against the captains of his ships. Following Kresh's failed uprising on Kar Delba, the remaining Sith counselors sided with Sadao, and not long afterward, Krish's flagship entered the Zeos system bearing a warning against following Sadao, but Sadao ordered the ship shot down by his new Sith apprentice, Gav Daragon, and Krish was believed killed. Leading a massive fleet of warships, Sadao then entered hyperspace bound toward the Koro's major system, Gav Daragon's homeworld. From his eye-like meditation sphere poised above the Primus Galud star, Sadao created magical illusions of additional invaders as he commanded his armada's attacks on Koros Major, Coruscant, and Kyrek. Rebelling against his Sith Master, Gav Daragon fired on and boarded Sadao's meditation sphere, forcing Sadao to evacuate it and breaking his battle meditation illusions resulting in the defeat of the Sith invasions on all three planets where they had struck. Just before Republic Koro's ships led by Jory Daragon and Empress Tita herself, who had arrived to save Gav Daragon, could do so, Nagasato detonated the supergiant star Primus Galud and retreated with his Sith fleet to Korriban. But it was a trap. Ludo Karish had faked his death and had, in Nagasato's absence, militarized the remaining Sith to prepare for an invasion. He capitalized on Sato's sudden reappearance from hyperspace to attack Sato's diminished fleet. Sato was not finished yet, however, and blockading his flagship between two Masasai mutinied vessels, sent a third damaged craft on a suicide run into Ludo Krish's ship, killing him while Krish begged for his life. As Republic warships entered the Korriban system from hyperspace, Nagasato made his retreat to the Yavin 4 moon by using the force to supernova the nearby Denari binary star system. Ludo Krish's son, Elko Krish, whom Kresh had hidden away in secret near the Stygian caldera, was another survivor of the Sith Empire's failed expansion into Republic space, however would die many years later of a ruptured stomach from overconsumption of alcohol on the eve of his staging a massive retaliation and invasion against the Republic. However, the last Sith standing at the Battle of Korriban between Sadao Kresh and the Republic was Shar Dakhan, a Sadao loyalist, pure blood Sith ruler of planet Chehodos, whom had also led the attack on the Republic capital of Coruscant. After Sadao fled, the mantle of Dark Lord passed for the eighth time, this time to Shar Dakhan. Cornered by the Republic on and around Korriban, Shar Dakhan ordered suicide after suicide run against the Republic blockade, eventually depleting his own population to only a few. So fell the original Sith Empire. The final Sith Council of Ten had consisted of Marco Ragnos, Ludo Krish, Simus, Dorgal Ram, Horak Mu, Naga Sadao, Shar Dakhan, Garu, Tritus Nal, and Tenebrae, Lord Vitiate, over Sith Nathema. Aside from Tenebrae and Elko Krish, the only survivors of Sith following the Korriban bombing campaign by the Republic 
were the lost tribe of the Sith, the descendants of Yarrow Corsin's Sith Dreadnought Omen, which crashed on the remote planet Kesh after being ambushed by Jedi in Republic space above the largest moon of Phygon III.